Hello, my name is Kyle Moloney from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And this is the uh, second part of our, well, interview anarchists here from Richmond, Virginia, from the River City, in which uh, we uh, try to find out what the, um, I guess, past, present, and uh, potential future holds for many of the anarchists here. And I have today my guest, Matt Baioli, and I guess we'll begin by first asking, uh, where are you from? I'm um, actually from uh, here in Richmond, Virginia. I grew up in Stratford Hills and I moved to Midlothian. Uh, oh, so you, you were born here in Richmond? Yeah. Um, parents too? Uh, no, my dad was from Boston. My mom was from New York. From New York? Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, so different areas. And how do they find themselves here in Richmond? Um, I'm pretty sure my dad was here because uh, he was trying to open a business around here. And uh, my mom was here because her brother, I could have this wrong, but I don't think I do. But your brother moved here. And then he was like, oh, hey, Virginia's great. She's like, all right, I'm young. I'm in Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's uh, kind of like Portlandia, Richmond, Landia. Um, so you had, your dad had a business here. Uh, what kind of business was he uh, operating? He ran a lot of coffee shops. He was uh, pretty entrepreneurial in that sense. Um, but uh, he never really, uh, he, didn't, he didn't finish college and uh, went to the Navy or, or something like that and uh, just decided that, uh, you know, you can make money without a college education if you know what you're doing. You know, yeah. you can actually provide things for people that people want you know they don't care what the, the degree of the person that uh, the, the education qualification of the person who's given them the stuff they want they just want the stuff you know All right but I, mean, I figured that out pretty well so are you a caffeine connoisseur of now uh i told you kind of sore about it i drink a lot of coffee <laughs> well that's cool that's interesting that's a good background um a lot of people generally have um i guess backers of their parents kind of work for the government so to speak and so they wouldn't have um i guess the background information to be, I guess, a natural born capitalist. Yeah, never, um, never, ever have my parents work for the government. Nice. Except for the, the pre period during the Korean War, my dad was in the Navy. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so you kind of grew up with interesting uh, background influences yeah. then, um, and free market uh, services being provided. Do you feel that was kind of fundamental, I guess, in uh, where you are right now? Uh, I think that, so uh, a lot of the reason why uh, you, you'll notice in academia, you have a lot of like really radical leftists. Um, Friedrich Hayek, who's an Austrian economist, um, pointed out that uh, people who are very um, uh, cautious of the marketplace are, tend to avoid it and they go into academia. Mm -hmm. And people who are not so much so that way um, just go into the marketplace. So right. That's why you see all that in, the, in, the, in academia. Uh, and I, I guess only, only so much in the sense that my father was a bit of a businessman and therefore he has a natural a lean towards, towards those kinds of things. Uh, maybe. Uh, kind of reflected in how I, I grew up, but uh, I never really thought of it in that way. Right, I mean, say, yeah, yeah that seems like an interesting uh, influence, then mm -hmm. I would say, uh, towards economics, is that that deals a lot with that, mm -hmm. um, with real tangible, accessible ways of the market, yeah. um, trying to meet those demands and trying to run something sustainable. Um, now, how would you say your relationship with your parents are? It's uh, pretty good. I don't really have any complaints about the relationship I have with my parents. Uh, um, Sometimes it's difficult because most pe most um, parents between like their father is uh, a one generation gap. My dad and I have a two generation gap. I was born when my dad was sixty. Oh. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah, okay, yeah. So uh, so I mean that's a little difficult, but I mean in terms of getting along, it's never really been a problem. It's been a pretty happy household. Yeah. So yeah. you're the uh, youngest in the family. Uh, youngest in the family. Yeah. I mean I have some half siblings from my dad's first marriage, um, but they're. They're much, much older than I am. Right. Uh, I, I sort of consider myself an only child. How do you feel? Well, yeah, I, I would imagine. Um, I guess you feel only still, I guess, do, I mean, do, do you talk about, I guess, Austrian economics uh, with your parents? Or uh, how uh, I, I have tried to. Um, they don't really take to it particularly well. Uh, I might be able to, I think sometimes they'll agree with me just so I stop. <laughs> All right, son, you're all right. Yes, okay, yeah. we're done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I would imagine that maybe your father would kind of understand it more because I guess a lot of this stuff is free market economics. Uh, I, I'd imagine people in the business end understand more of the direct uh, attack, bureaucratic attack. Yeah, well, he definitely government. he definitely does in that sense, but he, uh, I think a lot of people, uh, regardless of what side you're on, have a lot of logical contradictions in their thinking. Mm -hmm. So you might say, uh, yes, these are things that are helpful for my business, but you won't, a lot of people, and I mean my dad included, will not carry that out to this full logical extent. Mm -hmm. you know? What are their, I guess, uh, backgrounds politically then? 
um, for myself. Yeah, I mean, your, your parents' background. Because I would say a lot of stuff would influence. I mean, you, you having a, I guess a long-term uh, connection with them for many years. Uh, I would say a lot of this would, would somehow contribute to where you are today. Um, I would, well, your father being a military, yeah. would he? Well, uh, well, my my actually, it was really it's really weird. My dad. Um, he he when he when he was raising a family he he was trying really hard to avoid like he was actually consciously thinking I don't want my household to resemble the Navy you know um, so my dad never wanted anyone to call him sir he thought that was like some kind of a address of authority that isn't really like legitimate in the household he thought that things should be kind of informal in the household right. so I mean as a dad he was he was he was stricter than I think most dads were but not in a way that implies like you know authoritarianism mm -hmm. you know um, my dad was a uh, like, all right, if you don't want to listen to me, that's fine. I, I know I'm right because I've, I've lived 60 years more than you have, and there's consequences of what you're going to do. So the consequences are going to be your punishment, not your, not me, you know, being a dad. <laughs> right. What kind of, um, I guess, what about with your mother then? Um, my mom, oh, so a lot of it is my, my parents are pretty right wing, I guess, and, uh, like stereotypically American right wing. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, they, they, very often when we would talk politics in the household, there was very little addressing of the actual topic and more of a very general statement that the government screwed things up. Because that's a pretty consistent right-wing anthem, right? All right. Um, and I kind of took to that. And then without actually having anything that was specific to link to it, I sort of just took that overall statement and then ran with that and then carried it to its, I guess what I would say, its full logical extent. All right. So I guess a lot of uh, influence people, I guess, growing up with these uh, statements, seeing how government's kind of messing up with... Uh, and they're completely correct statements, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess it was kind of politically active, I guess, in that sense, uh, uh, having those kind of lively discussions. It wasn't uh, so much of a discussion, more of like um, my mom and my dad ranting to each other. <laughs> uh, and you caught in the middle of that. Um, I was upstairs and... <laughs> right. Um, yeah. All right. So, so what? Uh, I guess in those areas of connection, I guess, at what age did you feel? I guess, uh, or, or did you um, have yourself an interest? I guess in those uh, political discussions. Um, in 2010, I had to do a project for my, um, um, like a, I think it was it was it was some, it was whatever social studies class I was taking at the time, uh, whatever whatever grade I was in, and uh, it was on like the 2008 thing, you know, that whole market crisis. Uh, anyway, I looked into that. And uh, I didn't know anything about economics. Um, I only I knew very very little about politics. Uh, mm -hmm. very, I basically I knew uh, who the president was, knew the vice president was, knew the last president was, and I knew like kind of their political affiliation. That's about all I really knew. Nice. So I came into pretty objectively. Like, I didn't really have any idea of like what I was supposed to look for. Right. Um, and which I learned how some of these these systems would work. Um, how um, central banking worked. Uh, I learned how uh, markets tend to function. And uh, a little, a little bit into the nature of money, and uh, I was able to draw a conclusion from that um, that very, very strongly resembled Austrian business cycle theory. I didn't know that at the time, but I would, I, through a little further, you know, inquiring, I was able to kind of link those things together and then associate myself with like minded people. Mm -hmm. and, and and this was a a project that you were studying. It, it was just a little paper I had to do for my my class. No classes. Um, whatever social science class I was in 2010, I have to think about what grade I would have been in. Right, 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 right. Um, it, w it was either a history class, a government class, or something like that, you know. And what did, uh, I guess, I guess, and, and studying that, I guess, of course, uh, leading to, of course, a lot more area, of course, of studying that would, uh, I guess, branch off into. Yeah. Um, did you feel excited about that? Did you feel kind of an earnest... Uh, uh, I felt actually like I was, um, I felt like it was a bad thing. Yeah? I felt like it was a really, really bad thing, because... Um, for the longest time, it was basically just assumed that I was going to, you know, get through high school and then go to music school. Mm -hmm. That was like what I was going to do. And that was what I was always planning on doing. That's what everyone always expected me to do. So when I kind of developed an interest in something else, I was like, all right, let me just, let me, let me just shut this out. <laughs> Probably isn't, you know, let me just go back to, let me get back to the plan. All right. Um, I did get back to the plan for a little while and it wasn't really, didn't really work out for me. And I was, I realized what I really was interested in. Yeah, so. And uh, your interest now is uh, music. Uh, what kind of music do you play? Um, well, first of all, I can get paid. I'll play you anything. <laughs> uh, I, mean, for, I, I originally got accepted to school for guitar playing, classical guitar playing. I have a C. It's all shred metal. I'll jam with anyone. You know, I don't know. It's. Um, I guess there's an academic side to it, and there's a the fun side to it. So, well, what's the interest of the fun side? Why do you play music? Um, I guess it depends on my mood. <laughs> so it's an outlet of expression. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah, I, I have a CD. 
mm -hmm. by the way. Just Google my name. <laughs> um, and now you've found a way to kind of combine uh, guitar playing with uh, economics uh, in, in terms of, uh, I guess, will you elaborate what your current job is? Oh, yeah, I mean, I just sell music once You sell music now, right? Yeah. <laughs> so do you enjoy that? Do you feel that? Yeah, I really uh, do. Do you, do you clamor for minimum wage for that? or? Uh... Well, yeah, I mean, it definitely, um, the commission pay is pretty cool in the sense that, like, you... You, you know that whatever you're paid, you did legitimately earn that. Right. You know that you can give yourself a raise. And uh, so I say, yeah, I, def I definitely like it. I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd rely on that for my income for the rest of my life, but I mean, right. it's a good experience to have. Yeah, a lot of this stuff also is a good uh, stepping stone. It's uh, a yeah. to the, to jumping board to the next. Uh, I mean, I, for, in terms of my working experience, I really did have, it's almost like a, like a picture perfect like job market climb where I started out washing dishes. Then I got a job as like a store clerk at a cleaner store, like a Hallmark store. All right. And now I, I you know, I have a job I actually enjoy. And nice. Yeah. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah. That's classic. No, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Um, jobs out of which, of course, uh, are not really designed to support families and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, things that kind of naturally lead you to more interesting uh, mm -hmm. job perspectives with a lot more responsibilities. Uh, so yeah, so, okay, that's great. You have a natural climb. I, mean, I only made minimum wage for about two months in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice. So I guess, how do you feel then about minimum wage in, in general? I and we have a video on this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> show up in the, uh, That's very true. That's should very show true. up over there somewhere. Yeah, not over there. We'll, um, we'll put that up later. Yeah. Uh, but I guess when you were, I mean, before your your rise into interest in uh, uh, economics, I mean, did you um, what were your attitudes? I guess towards uh, employment or wages or anything. Um, like that? I actually thought um, for a while really naively I would say now that the only consequence of a higher minimum wage was that people would make more money All right. um, and that the only reason that the minimum wage wasn't higher is because people just didn't want to pay more money, so they just don't want to do. You know, of course that was completely ridiculous. I don't, I don't think that. Like they're right. hoarding all that cash, or yeah, money. or yeah, yeah, basically stuff like that. Um, so uh, yeah, I definitely, you know, I, I used to like if you were to ask me, you know, back in in 2010, even like a little in 2011, I would have said, yeah, minimum wage, raise that, um, and I would never have touched Social Security or right. anything. Else. <laughs> um, I probably would have been cool with like legal pot, but I don't think it would have been cool with legal coke. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I would have called the Afghan war justified. Uh, so I mean, I've definitely had some some alterations in my mind. Right, and I guess a lot of that could be this product of uh, social influence, media influence, uh, yeah. parental school influence. But, Especially uh, given the, the the stuff that I do, the independent studies and the uh, seminars I attend, it was basically a total immersion. Right. So, so how did that start? I guess uh, so. After your, that project that you did and, and immersing yourself and trying mm -hmm. to understand the the business cycle, yeah. Uh, what happened after that? Um, I didn't really do much with it for about a year, um, and then when I was a excuse me a senior in high school. I just I kind of met some people doing like I I got online and I found like there was like some events going on that I might be cool with like there was like a protest the end the Fed protest oh, yeah. yeah so I was like all right let me go to that and I met some people through that and then like all these people seem to know each other mm -hmm. you know it's like old people they all know each other somehow um, and uh, basically that that makes you feel like you're a part of something so it's really easy to get involved with something you actually feel like you're you're a part of something that's like pretty coherent you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then in 2013, I went to the International Students for Liberty Conference because uh, it popped on my Facebook was, and I was like, I did, there was nothing competitive about it. You just had to go and sign yeah. up. So I went and uh, I went to some booths and they were like, hey, apply for these programs. I'm like, all right, why not? So I took the time to do that. And I got accepted to a couple of them. And then that sort of basically just been like a slippery slope from there. And uh, did that lead you to the Mises Institute? Yeah, that was one of them. They wouldn't have a booth there. But that's something like, I mean, you, you know, you don't have to look for it. You eventually just find these kinds of things. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. And like you wish that someone introduced a lot more earlier. Though, like, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Sure. Uh, I mean, I went to an IHS seminar um, and that was a lot of fun. I met some really, really intelligent people through that. And I uh, had some good connections, made some friends, um, book recommendations. And I went to Mises the week after that. And that was a mind blowing experience. I, <laughs> I learned a lot. Um, and I'm doing that again this summer. And then the, recently I went to a, the Foundation for Economic Education seminar. It, it, it's just you know, it's it's definitely something that makes you think a whole lot. Right. And uh, again, total immersion in these ideas. How long were you at the Mises Institute? Um, I was only there for a little over a week. And then you met like some of the uh, I guess the all stars of the mm -hmm. uh, anarcho capitalist. Yeah. Well, uh, I, even I mean, because it's a short time, but it's it's all you're doing that entire time. Because people there 
it's not like you're in class and you leave class and you don't talk about anything that was in the class. Like when you're in you're in school, mm-hmm. you know, you're in your math class and you don't go out in the hall and you don't talk about the math class, you know. Right. But here you would do that, you know. You talk about the class and like all, you know. That was like really all it was. Very ninety like percent of the conversation was about the stuff that you were directly learning. Right. And there was required reading and all that kind of stuff too. So that maybe gave me some really good book recommendations. Um, so I, I basically have like a little mini library for myself now. <laughs> so that's, I guess you've, I guess, kind of grown mm-hmm. remarkably gets yeah. within 2013 yeah. uh, to now um, immersing yourself into these particular subjects. Uh, I, I think you've gone pretty far, I yeah. guess. Uh, <laughs> what, are you like reading like one book uh, every other day then? Uh? Uh, not so much that, <laughs> you know, uh, because my, I, I don't make enough money to right. support that. Yeah, yeah. But um, I do, I do quite a bit. Yeah. Um, um, I'm very much into the. Uh, see, I, I feel like a, a downfall of a lot of uh, really smart people and really, uh, what I would say, correct people in terms of their political thinking, uh, is that their ideas are purely philosophical and they can't carry it over into us the way they can. They can't make justify in terms of real world uh, application. Uh, so that's why I'm really into the economics of it because mm-hmm. this says yes, this is what I want. Here's why I want it, you know, and this is what I think the results would be, and here's why these would be the results, <laughs> rather than saying well. <clears throat> this is this is how I feel about the world, so you know we should do this because I feel this certain way. Right. And then someone else can simply disagree with your premise, and you have a big you know no one can settle on anything. Yeah, my yeah. opinion versus your opinion. Right. And uh, instead of looking at some of the uh, factual errors and how uh, yeah. economics alone have, have been shown to prove right. um, accurately predicting a lot of the uh, bubble bursting and stuff like that, so that's a good uh, I guess pattern to actually apply in uh, a lot of different areas. Um, and now you are uh, you're, you're studying um, at a local community college. Yeah. And you have uh, your eyes set on uh, what do you have your eyes set on after that? Uh, I mean, I'm trying to go to a four year college. Uh, I mean, I would be totally happy being at like GMU and like doing their um, like they have the Mercatus Center up there, so I can conduct some research there. Um, I checked out Hillsdale College for mm-hmm. a while too. Um, what do you think of that? That's it's a nice school. It's, yeah. it's I mean it's uh, completely private. Right. Which is awesome. They have this remarkable thing about uh, this private school. Well, what, what is that uh, in terms of uh, affirmative action or government? Thing? Oh, oh yeah. The, the cool thing about them in the '80s, they tried to have affirmative action forced on them, and in um, their charter was. Um, I guess established in, 80, in 1844, mm-hmm. uh, and they specifically had in their chart. And this is before like the war between the states and all that stuff. They said, we, in terms of acceptance of students, we were never going to look at the student's skin color uh, in order to determine acceptance. And basically, what affirmative action is is you have to look at their skin color so you can right. rate their SAT scores separate. So they're like, you know what? We don't really want a part of this. Um, and the government's like, all right, you know what? We can't make you do it, but we can keep money from you. And they're like, all right. Keep your dirty money. <laughs> yeah. yeah, keep your. So I, I, I guess I really like. Uh, yeah, your stolen money. Uh, I, I like uh, sticking to principle like that. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, so that's an interest. I guess you'd be studying uh, economics then, right? Yeah, no matter where I go, I'm going to be in economics. Yeah. Washington well, Lee is a pretty good school, too. Man. Which one? Washington Lee. Washington Lee? Yeah. yeah. I also heard George Mason has a good uh, yeah. program there. Yeah, as I mentioned well. it with them. Yeah, they do. They really do. And this is surprising uh, because I, I'm from uh, Northern Virginia. I lived there for quite some time, but I never heard George Mason having uh, such a good yeah. program for that. Um, and then, so what, what would you want to do then with uh, a degree in economics? Dude, I mean, it's just one of those. Th- I mean, I, it's a profitable degree. <laughs> That's really all I need to know right now. Um, I guess I could be a consultant. Mm-hmm. I don't mind being that. I would be a consultant at all. Bob Murphy's a consultant. He is a consultant. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he is. That's a good. You can uh, add in uh, karaoke with your uh, resume in there as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you can play music and kind of lull him into. Singing. Well, I mean, if you look at my resume right now, it's really like polarized. I mean, because <laughs> yeah. the first half is all one thing that you would not expect to be relevant to the second half at all. But it's like, well, yeah, I would find economics to be relevant to everything you do. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Right. Uh, I guess in terms of like how people, how the public would perceive certain things I've done versus right. other things I do. Um, and there's a, there's a definite time frame because there's like all this music stuff and it just stops at one day and there's all this other stuff. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> done. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's so much done. It's just done. It just uh, doesn't as a different evolution, yeah. I guess, because uh, it seems to like have a lot of passion in this. I, I felt uh, like I uh, when I I felt like I would um, I had. Um, the only thing I had in common with the people that I would hang out with when I was like into music a whole lot, or I still am, but when I was like into it like a lot, mm-hmm. um, was the music. I feel like these other, like with these other things I'm doing now, it's like I've got a lot more in common than even just with the stuff that we're talking about. Right. But well, I guess why do you have an interest then in economics? Uh, why why that? Uh, I guess that passion or interest in that. I mean, it's. Do you feel uh, kind of conflicted in a lot of the misinformation you were taught? Uh, do you um, feel uh, it makes you look at the world a lot more honestly and see 
Do you not like being bullshit? Definitely, yes. Um, A lot of that's true. Uh, I guess it comes down to, like, the importance of it. I mean, um... Everything. I mean, there's. I think. Any, I think that the world has a place for anybody. And like, if, if you're like, if you know a lot about like bugs or insects, I think the works. The world still has like a place for someone like that. You know, um, I guess what I would consider important, like it affects a lot of people um, at once, and it affects them in a very dramatic way. I mean, like the way that like you budget your life. You know, like all of that's very relevant. Uh, so I, I guess having that kind of a an impact, I consider it very important, and therefore want to make myself a part of it. And you've uh, written some interesting articles uh, yeah. on the subject. I think I, I have been kind of enjoying reading. Uh, one of them actually was on the what liberal mm-hmm. what, what uh, group was that recently? Um, I mean, what are you talking about the minimum wage article? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, the minimum wage article. I write for the Libertarian. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, like Facebook pages share my stuff all the time, but um, that one particular has gotten a lot of attention. Right now, so which I think is which is which is good because I mean in the, in a time where there's all this bullshit going around, Seattle, to have some, uh, yeah, yeah, Seattle um, really is screwing themselves over. They've just they've just doubled the amount of outlawed jobs that they right. have. Yeah, they're already feeling the pinch. A lot of these uh, places where they used to receive uh, a lot of extra benefits from like the hotels, mm-hmm. like free food or free parking. It's like, well, you now since we have to pay yeah. you this much, we can't afford to give you any. Free now, food. eventually, what's going to happen though is uh, the prices are going to rise to adjust to that, and then they'll everything will go back to the way. It was before but there's going to be you know quite a bit of uh, disarray between now and then all right all right um and i guess uh i guess with, with all of this i just like to i guess ask uh, what does anarchy then mean to you hmm uh to me i mean i don't even think of it as a collectivist concept i just i, I sort of imagine what what I, what I would i want you know and uh i don't want to pay for service that i don't use i don't want to um have to agree to contracts I didn't actually agree to um, or be treated as though I did uh, and I understand most people wouldn't want that for themselves they just want it for other people so I guess when you eliminate that concept then it, it's a, a form of anarchy right yeah I guess it's freedom to select your uh, interpersonal relationship yeah, I, I guess just not being having to have anything forced on you is right it? yeah yeah um, and I guess the last question would be if there was um, out of all the government monopolies which one would you say you abhor the most or which one do you feel affects you the most that's or? that's that's pretty easy the worst government monopoly is a monopoly on money Monop- <laughs> the Fed then uh, yeah. <laughs> centralized banking all yeah, right, by great. far. By far. Yeah, it's not even close. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Matt, for, uh, yeah, for this well, interview. I really appreciate your uh, spreading anarchy work out there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and with that, thank you for watching, and uh, see you guys at Victory Party. Take good care.